everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. I'm so excited to be joined with Kimmy J Designs today. Um, looking at the chat, we've got some really excited people here. We've got Dave T, we've got Michelle, we got Paco, Chris, Fairy, Cody Bear, yes, Steve. So excited y'all are here. Um, if you're over on YouTube, please join us here on be.net slash live so you can join in on the chat. And I'm excited to have Kimmy J here today. We are doing a vector art and sticker making stream in Adobe Illustrator. So we've got a full day planned for you today. So let's take a look at the schedule. We've got some live daily creative challenges happening. We've got Photoshop daily creative challenge with Voodoo Val, which was just on. We got uh, after us, we've got Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Claudie from Print My Soul. And we've got a web design with Elise, Elise Todd and an Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard Pinsky coming up later today. So be sure to stay on after the stream and watch more streams. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit about you. Can we introduce yourself and a little bit more about you? Hey, hey everybody. My name is Kimmy J. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator, and um, I'm based out of South Louisiana. So uh, I got my start as actually as a screen printer for a local nonprofit here in Louisiana. And um, I did that for a couple years. And then after that, I started uh, freelancing. So, and now I'm just kind of streaming. <laughs> so my business is a little bit slow. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. And then I, I, oh, sorry. Sorry. I just saw my website pop up. I was like, this is my website. <laughs> and this is actually the Adobe portfolio website too, which is like really neat. Highly recommend uh, anyone who's not too website tech savvy, or if you're like me and you just really don't want to code a website <laughs> just yet, definitely go through and uh, use the Adobe portfolio website. It's pretty neat, really easy to use too, but yeah. I wanted to mention that um, follow Kimmy J on here on Behance. She actually live streams as well. Um, and I've caught a few of her live streams. So be sure to follow her on Behance because you will be uh, alerted when she goes live. Right here. And you can actually watch all of my uh, past videos on here. Beautifully color coded just for you because color coding is life. <laughs> so. And I do everything from paper design all the way to uh, just regular illustrator illustrations. So yeah, amazing. Well, if you would like to dive in, we can we can get started. I also wanted to let y'all know you can download. Um, there is a download in the information to follow along with Kimmy. Uh, we will be streaming today and tomorrow. So, all right, let's do this. <laughs> So pretty much I'm going to show y'all how to do a sticker design in Illustrator, but I'm going to put my little twist on it. Like I've been doing, I don't know if anyone's actually seen uh, me streaming lately, but I've got kind of a quirky way that I create all of my illustrations. So I'm just going to show y'all how, how I do that. And the end result will be with the intent of exporting it for a sticker. So but this is what we're going to be illustrating today. And I did provide y'all with a more simplified sketch. So definitely encourage y'all to download that sketch and illustrate it however you want to. You don't have to do it like I do. Do, do you, do you? I'm curious to see um, how y'all, how y'all want to do it, but I do need your help. I have a couple of color palettes I picked out. Um, and I need y'all help me pick a color palette to work with. All right, chat, um, let us know which of the color pal palettes you'd like to see can we use today? And while we're waiting, let's see if anyone's said anything in the chat. We've got, oh, nice. Danine says, really hoping I can learn enough so my boss lets me make some designs when I'm not screen printing. That's kind of exciting. All right, we've got some C's coming in and we've got some A's coming in. All right, it looks like 
It looks like C is the winner. C is the winner. Yes. All right. Awesome. And I heard there's another screen printer in the house. Yes. Yes. Screen printing is amazing. I love screen printing. That's actually how I got started was with a small screen print shop. All right. So let's get rid of all of this. We don't need it. So we are going to get rid of it. This is our C. All right, first thing first, I've got to get rid of all these colors because we don't need them. I don't want them. So it's like all unused. Let's throw them away. Awesome. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna add these to the color palette we have here. I'm gonna drop those in. So this is just gonna be our starting color palette. Um, just kind of like a little jumping point. So I'm gonna put them in, I'm gonna put them in as a global color. That way, if we wanna tweak the shade uh, tint, hue, whichever, we can do that. And it will affect all of the colors across the entire illustration. I'll drop this in there. Boop. Okay, good deal. Now we can get rid of all that, clear that off and bring our sketch back. All right, and let me know if y'all have any questions. If I need to slow down, if I'm going too fast, then I can do that for you. All right, let's get rid of that. And I've organized my workspace exactly how I need it based on what I am designing today. So I have my illustration in here. I'm gonna switch that one to multiply and I'm going to lower the opacity so I can see it a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna lock it. And now I'm gonna put in all of my flats first. So flats is just basically like I said, just the flat colors <laughs> for everything. So, and I went ahead and I started separating my layers. So this is, we're gonna start with the octopus and we're gonna use the flats for that. And uh, let's make them purple, why not? Uh, Stefani in the chat says, did not know about the global colors, so nice. Mm-hmm. Yes, global colors are really, really fun. And I can give you like a brief uh, on how they work. Oh, where'd my mouse go? <laughs> my mouse disappears on me sometimes. So let's say for instance, let me just go to a different color real quick. So let's say this dark purple is a color we wanna use. And I pop that in as a global color. So that's my dark purple. So if you click on it, you have to click on it in your swatches panel. So that is very important there. And I want to modify it. I want to make it more of this um, jade color. I click OK, click off, and it is going to affect the color on my artboard. So if I had this in more than one place, it would go ahead and it would switch it all for me. So you don't have to go through and click every single color, every single color, uh, trying to change it. So that is actually life changing, especially when you're um, a detailed illustrator or if you're designing for screen printing it can make a big difference. All right, so I'm gonna use the pen tool and my little stylus over here, and I'm just gonna start kind of plotting all this in. Awesome. We have a question in the chat. Um, Tracy Miller is asking, how did you come up with the inspiration for this illustration? It's cute. Um, well, when I first started illustrating a long time ago, I actually did a lot of traditional painting and Octopus is something that I always painted. I don't know why I always liked them, but I just did. <laughs> so I painted them a lot and I sold a lot of them actually. And I haven't, I, I haven't painted or illustrated them in a long time. And then coffee, uh, I am a coffee addict. If you watch my streams, I stream early in the morning for where I'm at. <laughs> and I'll go through two to three cups of coffee. I will take a break, just go make me another cup of coffee. So <laughs> I love coffee. And then the paper, airplanes, sailboats. I just, I've always loved those. I wish I had the patience to sit there and fold paper and make origami. So I just kind of created an illustration with all of them put together. That's awesome. This is not purple, but that is okay. Make a quick change for that. And Laura is asking, do you ever stream your sketching process? No, because it takes forever. 
I'm very meticulous when it comes to sketching and some, well, actually sometimes I do. Yes. I'll, sh I'll stream like the tail end of it, but I just, I take forever to sketch because it's a constant reiteration. And normally when I sketch, I like to sketch late in the day when I'm sitting on the couch watching TV with my husband. <laughs> so, um, and that's just not the time I stream. So, but uh, if I do stream my sketching, it's normally to fill in those last details and to put in like all these dark shading spots and kind of to like plot the rest of the plan. That's normally what I'm going to stream because I don't like to bore people with the sketching because <laughs> there's a lot of erasing and frustration on my part <laughs> when it comes to sketching. And I don't want to bore you with all of that. <laughs> We've got quite a few people in here saying they love this illustration. So thank you. Download uh, the one I have posted for y'all. It's I guarantee you, it's cute too. <laughs> There's not a full octopus in there, but it is a little tentacle in there. It's really cute, <laughs> and it is free for y'all to use. Make whatever you want with it. If you want to create a sticker and order some stickers with it, go for it. It is for you guys. It's all y'all. So I'm just going to fix these up. And I am using a pen tool. Cody says, I'm slow at sketching too. I've always tried to get faster and it never happens. LOL. <laughs> when I first started watching um, Adobe Live, Cody Bear was actually one of the first illustrators I would watch religiously every morning. So hi, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to her she actually inspired me to start uh streaming she's very patient with me and answered a bunch of my questions <laughs> that's awesome yep. i love i love the streaming community here yes i love it too it was just so good especially when COVID first hit and i did not know what to do with myself because i ended up um i guess you could say retiring from where i was very early because it was just no longer feasible to uh, stay where I was. So I kind of had to uh, keep myself busy a bit and streaming. I just ended up, I love it. I love it. And I, I like teaching, I like sharing knowledge and uh, sharing those tidbits of basically something I wish someone would have told me when I first started out. It's awesome to see everyone's different process when they work too. Yeah, yeah there's no uh, there's no wrong way to doing um, anything with these programs. I can honestly tell you, there's just a different way. So don't ever feel like someone is telling you you're doing it wrong because you're you're not. You're just doing it different. Uh, you might be taking the longer route. <laughs> which I found I do a lot sometimes, but that's just how I process. So sometimes I will take the longer way around to figure out how to do something and then I'll find the shorter way, but there's no wrong way. Just like making these flats, I could use the pencil tool to make them. I could use the brush tool to make them, but I prefer using the pen tool because I feel like I have more control over it. Whereas some feel like the pencil tool would give them more control. There's just a bunch of different ways you can approach anything. Chrissy's asking, are you an illustrator? Yes, uh, Chrissy, Kimmy is working in Adobe Illustrator. Yes, I am an illustrator. I started illustrating when I was working for uh, the print shop. I did a lot of illustrations for them and I did a lot of illustrating um, traditionally, I did a lot of paintings and art shows and things like that um, years ago, and I kind of uh, wandered away from that and fell more into more digital stuff. But I hope to get back into it one day. I just, I love digital. 
because you can control Z your way out of anything and you can't really control Z your way out of anything when you're twerking traditionally. <laughs> but I have a lot of wall space in my house, so I kind of need to fill it. Uh, Deneen in the chat is saying, I'm going to watch you every day because you're from Louisiana and that kind of inspires me. Because I'm from Louisiana? How does that inspire you because I'm from Louisiana? But thank you. <laughs> so we've got a few people asking, what devices are you using? I am working on a Huion Cavmus, I think that's how you say it, Cavmus, uh, 20, I believe. And the Huion is the less expensive cousin to the Cintiq. <laughs> So it is very affordable if you're just starting out um, and not sure which direction you wanna go in. Cause I'm traditionally a graphic designer um, all the way. And I wasn't sure if illustration is something that I wanted to do or stay in. And I didn't wanna spend a bunch of money on Cintiq plus uh, my husband would probably uh, leave me if I did. <laughs> so the Huion was the least expensive of the two. And it's, um, it, it works great. It's amazing. And I do a lot of my sketching on the iPad as well. It's fairly inexpensive. Awesome. And I use an iPad Air. Just because I use it mostly for sketching, I don't really do much detailed uh, work and things like that. I might have to split him up a bit. We have uh, myth. Mithesh asking, do you do motion graphics? And no, I do not currently do motion graphics. That is something I, I want to learn. Um, I did recently upgrade my computer. I was working on a slower, not slower, but I was working on a, 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 a MacBook and it didn't have a lot of space on it to do motion graphics. But now I'm working on a PC. Sorry, Mac users. <laughs> I've upgraded to a desktop PC and it's it's a beast. It's a beast. It's actually my husband's computer. <laughs> and so uh, motion graphics is something I want to learn. It's something that's in really high demand right now. So it's definitely something I want to learn. All right, let's see. Let's color. Should we do this cup? Uh, I kind of. Let's do orange. I like orange. Orange is a pretty color. Here you go. Cut. Oh, we've got Lessa asking, what shapes are best for practicing the pen and pencil tool? What shapes? Um, can you be more specific on your question? I would... I, th I think I know what you're asking. Um, squiggles, squiggles. Because if it's a shape and you can make it with a shape, make it with the shape. Because I'm I'm doing I'm doing that right now. This cup is going to be met best created with a shape. So I'm going to create it with a shape, and we're going to reflect that over. But for your pen tool, I would just draw squiggles, honestly, and then try to create it that way. I think that is going to be your best bet. And take your time and to really get like a feel for it. The, I taught myself the pen tool in a day, but I didn't really master it for until like a couple months. It is challenging, not many people like it, but it is a very useful tool. And the pen tool is 
it's used throughout multiple programs in Adobe. So you're, you're not just going to find it in Illustrator. You're going to find it in Photoshop as well. And it's in After Effects. It's in quite a few different programs. All right, let's merge that together. Okay, we have a couple extra points here we don't need, so we're gonna get rid of those. All righty. Justin says, if you want to get better at the pen tool, I suggest illustrating something really detailed. Yep. Yep. That'll, that'll definitely help you get better at it. All right. I actually want this to kind of curve back some. Let me see. And there are some practice, um, practice worksheets online. And Adobe even has some. So I want to edit this in a non-destructive way. So I'm going to use my parents panel. This is the absolute best way for you to make an edit in the least destructive manner. <laughs> so, ah, we don't want to do that. So that is upper, I wanna do the lower. Okay, so this is gonna give me like a little arc at the bottom of that cup. Kind of look like it's, Turning. And so what the appearance panel does is let's say that didn't work for me and I want to do something else. I can actually come in here and turn it off and it'll just snap it right back to regular. So it's just very indestructive and you can do a lot of things to an object within that appearance panel. Whereas if I would have done it outside of the appearance panel, I would have to control Z to get back where I need it to be. That is super helpful to know. Yeah. I actually just learned that, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, so shrink that up a bit, get it where I want it. And once you expand it, it is no longer editable from that appearance panel. So just keep that in mind. But now I have that beautiful curve on that cup, so it looks a little bit more like a cup. So now I can come in and I can probably, I'm gonna wait to put those curves in just in case. All right, let's make the top of this cup. So I'm gonna come back to the appearance panel again. I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm using the warp tool to do all of that. Okay, let's hang on to that. Let's round this. Now let's do that. Mark it, mark it in the other direction though. A little bit too much. Let's bring it up a little bit. Perfect. Okay. And it helps to back up. That is a very orange cup. <laughs> We have someone in the chat. We have Caitlin in the chat asking if Illustrator is easier on tablet or desktop. And I guess I wanted to ask if you have played with Illustrator on iPad yet. I have not really played with it. I've, I've I get frustrated very easily. <laughs> I've actually watched you play with it and you make it look so easy. And I'm just like, how does she do that? How does she do that? <laughs> so, um, it, it frustrates me a little bit, but I do want to actually try and illustrate something completely on, on there, but I haven't done it yet. I personally prefer Illustrator on desktop just because it has more tools for you to use, whereas Illustrator for iPad is made for on the go, in my opinion. So you don't have as many, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but... I, yeah, I think it, I definitely think it's preference, you know, um, yeah. and the style of work you want to work in and things like that. But the best and most exciting thing I think is being able to have the cloud kind of back and forth between desktop yeah. and iPad. 
But if you if you sit if you're usually sitting at a desk and working from a screen like you are, it it does it would make sense that you are used to using desktop. Now I do love fres Fresco. I don't know if anyone's tried Fresco. I love Fresco. That's where I do a lot of my sketching at. Okay, so this cup's gonna have to go to the bottom. There we go. All right. Okay, let's that's the background. Let's do this whipped cream. Let's do it in yellow. This can just be uh, drawn in as well. Cody says, yeah, Kara, I love the cloud for Fresco and Photoshop. It's great. Yeah, the cloud is so amazing. I love it. And it auto saves as well, even on desktop. Unless your file is like extremely huge, <laughs> which I am currently, uh, I'm streaming um, one of those extremely big files. And it completely deactivates your auto save. So you have to remember to save. <laughs> which those, that if you've watched my past stream for the past couple of weeks, that's what I'm currently working on is a ginormous file. But I'm sure once I get used to it, I will swear by it. It's just one of those things that I would have to get used to. Because I mean, I used to not like Illustrator. <laughs> Let's see. We've got some more people in the chat saying hello. We got Robzilla in the house. Robzilla! We've got Tracy Miller saying, I love Fresco. I do too. <laughs> yes, me too. I caught uh, Robzilla's Adobe Live. When was that? Was that last week or the week before? All my days blend together <laughs> and um, it was very informative. I really enjoyed it. And I saw some people asking kind of where, where, where should they learn from other artists and things like that? Where's the best place? And I will say Adobe Live has Adobe so Live. many. Yeah. Adobe Just Live. <laughs> I, that's where um, I'm going to point you into that direction. Adobe Live. <laughs> uh, that's what I learned a lot from Adobe Live when I first discovered it. And I was just like in awe by it. I'm like, how did I not know this ever existed? Because if you, if this is the program you're trying to learn, go to, they literally go to the source. Train professionals, they're here to teach you and answer your questions. Why not take advantage of that? I did. I definitely took advantage of it. It's a great community. It's a supportive community. Everyone here is, they want to help you and answer your questions. I have not met a single person on here that that just was not willing to help or be lend support in any way. All right, so let's clean some of this up. This is looking a little a little rough. And for those of you joining just now, um, we are here with Kimmy J Designs, and she is working on this vector art and sticker design. Um, you can actually download a file of her sketch, uh, a little simplified version of her sketch um, in the information over here on Behance, uh, B -E dot, <laughs> B -E dot net slash live. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Layers, layers, layers on layers. Oh, oops, I want to do that. Okay. 
Do you have a schedule when you stream? Do you stream regularly or is it just kind of when you want to? I've slowly morphed into a creature of habit. <clears throat> I stream Monday through Thursday, um, 7 a.m. to about 10 to 11 a.m. Central Standard Time or whenever uh, an Adobe Live person kicks me off. <laughs> so, um, cause I try not to overlap them. Cause like I said, they are very beneficial to y'all. They're, they're more beneficial to y'all than I am. So I try not to overlap them. So when I, I always, every morning when I go to stream, I check what time they're coming on and I check what they're, what they're streaming. So if I do end up overlapping them, I do let them know and say, Hey, Odebi's live on. So if y'all want to go watch that, you won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> Because knowledge is power. And um, I'm someone who wants everyone to take advantage of that. All right. We're making good time. I, 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 I don't know if we are. I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> okay, so now we need to do our um, vote. Vote. Chat, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Kimmy's got a lot of knowledge to share. Buttons of experience, too. I can tell you all the mistakes I've made in life, so you don't make them. <laughs> all right. I think I'm going to need more colors. Did I use pink already? OK, I am going to need more colors. Let's see. I'm gonna give it to let's go with this. I think I want more of a blue. Let's see that. This looks like it might work. It was gonna kind of blend with that um octopus there. Must be 12, I can hear the siren. So I live next to a bunch of chemical plants and they do sirens. <clears throat> they test the sirens and I hear them going off now. So I know what time it is. <laughs> that Louisiana life. <laughs> okay. So if you ever struggle with colors, the color guide is very useful. So I'm noticing I am gonna need a couple more colors. So I'm going to jump over to the color guide to help guide me huh, to a color. Let's see. I want a bright one. And where, where do you find the color guide within your tools? Yeah, so you're going to go to window and you're going to click on color guide. And it is so useful. It'll give you shadows, tints, warms, cools, vivids. If you're like me and you just struggle with colors, this is a very useful tool. And also to get all of our colors, I actually used the, I think, yeah, right here, the Adobe color theme panel, which gives you pre-made colors already. Um, other artists were kind enough to put together for you. And they are all right here for you to use. And I usually just use them as a little jumping point. Just get started. So I want this to be super bright. Let me see. Cody's asking, is the download supposed to be the same sketch that Kimmy is working on or a different sketch? A different yes. one. It's a little bit simpler. It is, it is a little different. And then David says, I really love how your under sketch lines are showing through at this stage. It has its own aesthetic. Thank you. It does. <laughs> I've contemplated creating um, some pieces that kept that under sketch in, in mind. 
Let's see. If we go underneath. There we go. Now I don't have to just go around it. <laughs> Are you making a new layer for every color? Yes, I'm actually making a new layer for every piece of the illustration. So the octopus is on its own layer, the whipped cream, the coffee cup, and then the boat and the airplane are gonna be on their own layers. And I'm doing that just because of how the final execution of this piece is gonna work. It's gonna, it works better to have them all on their own layers. So I kind of cannot see that airplane. So let me turn that off real quick. It's easier to do it this way because I'm able to guide myself through the composition a lot better. Darina is asking, do you make your sketches on paper and import them in Illustrator or do you use Photoshop? I use Fresco. I use Fresco to make all of my sketches because I'm able to sit on the couch and watch TV while I do it. <laughs> That's my um, unwinding for the end of the day. I never stop working. <laughs> <laughs> it never stops. All right, so let me go ahead and lock these layers so they don't move anywhere. And then I want it this, all right, let me get rid of this color because I don't need it. I like to keep my color palette as clean as possible. So I'm not using, just so no extra colors pop up that I don't need. All right, so now I'm going to make this background part. Um, Jake is asking, how can we save and access this later to watch from the start? Well, amazing news. All the Adobe Lives can be rewatched. Um, and that's kind of the awesome thing about it too, is, you know, if you can't catch it live, you can watch it later. So if there's one that pops up and you might have work and you can't watch it, um, just make sure to watch the rewatch re later and you can rewind and kind of catch things if you miss them. You can go see all of Kimmy's past streams too on her Behance page. Yep, got quite a few now. I've got quite a collection. So I'm using shapes now just to kind of put this background together. Gabriella is wondering where, where do you find your inspiration when you come up with these ideas? Oddly enough, oh, t TV shows. <laughs> um, when I shopping, Pinterest is a really good place for inspira inspiration. Although I will tell you, I don't like Pinterest for graphic design purposes, but I love Pinterest for illustration purposes, which is really funny. My, my double standards on that. But for illustration, inspiration, I love Pinterest. It's great for that. And I actually have a collection of books that I have I'll go through when I'm in kind of a rut. If I need some inspiration, stories. I have a very um, overactive imagination. So I'm able to pull inspiration from anywhere. And what I, what I tell them, tell people a lot is look beyond what you're trying to actually see. And you'll be surprised at things that you can create. Kind of like when you stare into clouds, <laughs> just look beyond that and you'll be surprised um, what you'll find. Fill that in. We have, we have uh, Lessa saying chemical coffee, maybe the octopus should have three eyes instead. <laughs> I 
That's actually a really good idea. And that's kind of given me some ideas for um, some other stuff. So I do, I do a lot of really detailed stuff, overly detailed, overly complicated illustrations because I like to make my life difficult. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is like that, but that's kind of given me ideas. So if you don't uh, illustrate anything with, with that idea, let me know. <laughs> it's my overactive imagination coming out. But I was actually watching a TV show called Siren. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it, but that kind of got my imagination going for this piece and for uh, the other piece that I'm currently working on as well. All right, we've got a question from Jermaine asking, how did you get into art? Uh, my uh, aunt, who my she's my my nanny, our godmother, as um, in other places you would call it. She was an art teacher, and uh, she inspired me a lot growing up. And I decided, well, I want to be an artist. And then I decided, well. I can't make any money like that. <laughs> so I'm going to be a graphic designer and hopefully make money <laughs> that way. <laughs> but I've just, I've always loved art, um, different interpretations and things like that. I've always loved traditional art. Um, but she inspired, she inspired me a lot growing up. And then I kind of fell off the art wagon for a couple of years and uh, my my now husband, I was dating him at the time, he helped inspire me some more to continue illustrating and creating. So. I love that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's always interesting hearing people who are graphic designers, but also um, focus on a lot of illustration. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. I just, I love the, I guess, I don't even know how to describe it. For me, graphic design is, um, is mathematical, I guess you can say, which is funny because I'm awful at math. <laughs> so that's probably one of the reasons why I went into art. I can't spell and I can't do the math very well. So I'm like, I'm gonna go paint pretty pictures. <laughs> but when I was working for the nonprofit, a lot of my focus was pushed into accessibility design because of just what we were doing. And I, I only like kind of dabbled more so with the illustration. So when I left, I was able to kind of refocus myself back on the illustration, illustrative aspect that I love so much and kind of refined my passion. Which has been really fun, just being able to do this again. point there I don't need. If you don't need it, get rid of it. We got some more more people coming in. So excited to see everyone in the chat. We've got Anna Davis Court joining us. Yes. A lot of people saying hello. Anna was another really uh another streamer that inspired me. So Hey, Anna. Josh J is asking, what are some freelance designs you've done? Um, hi, Josh J. <laughs> That's my husband. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Amazing. 
Um, but yeah, I've actually done some work with a couple nonprofits around here. Um, uh, Davies Salsa, he, he isn't a non, he's not a nonprofit, but I met him through a nonprofit that I was working with. And I did some marketing material for him for our local, some local grocery stores we had, which was really fun because I was able to actually do some illustration through that. And then I've done a lot of work with a local brewery as well. I designed their primary beer label for one of their main beers. That's like the beer that they uh, promote. And I did the logo for that beer as well. And then they contacted me a couple times and we've partnered on quite a few stickers and t-shirt glass, glass designs and things like that that were really fun too. Couple of illustrations, a couple of logos here and there, and things like that. This is okay. So this color is blending with that background. Mm -mm -mm. Can't be having that. Oh, Josh did hi and then a blushy face uh, emoji. <laughs> and Anna says, "You inspire me, Kimmy. So glad to see you on live." Oh, thank you. All right, so just another example of how awesome these global colors are. So this, these colors are definitely, they're clashing. So I'm gonna have to go in here and just kind of tweak them a bit. That's what I'm going to work on right now. Click off of that and bam. Now they changed. I like it. All right, so those are all of our flats. They're all pretty much done. That's what it looks like. Not bad. There's a couple bumps in there that I'm gonna have to fix because if I don't, it's, uh, it's gonna drive me a little crazy. <laughs> So they have a lot of points coming through this curve right here that we just, we don't need. And if you don't need them, get rid of them because it just makes it a lot harder to try to zoom in. Sorry, <laughs> it just keeps going over to the side. It makes it harder to adjust if you have just a lot of unnecessary points. I'm just gonna get rid of all that. And then there, and now it's a lot smoother. Don't need it, get rid of it. Plus the less points you have, uh, the less wear on your system. So if you're running off of a, uh, a laptop that doesn't have a lot of a RAM space, you're not, you're not going to want a lot of points. I mean, these couple points probably won't do much to your system, but if you're working on something a lot more detailed, it, it can start to wear and tear. Darina is asking what document size do you do when you're designing stickers? I'm working on eight and a half by 11. Um, just cause, but your average sticker is probably going to be about maybe three, three inches, three and a half to five, five inches, five by five. But because if I intend to go in with, let's say some texture, those textures tend to be raster. And so you don't want to have to scale up you want to scale down. So you always want to design bigger than your intended size. Because if you try to scale up, it will not have a good result. It won't look pretty. So I just always recommend design bigger than what you intend. So if I'm going for a tiny sticker, then I'm going to design probably about the regular size of a sheet of paper. 
That's so good to know because when you're starting your project, there's kind of always the question of how big should I make this? And um, yeah, sometimes you can't you can't go larger. So I'm actually going to grab all of that. So this is going to be very important to have at the end. I'm going to paste it all in place on this layer. I'm just going to lock it, turn it off for now. All right. I think everything is good to go. I just need to move this over some. Anthony was wondering when you started live streaming on Behance. When? Oh, I would have to go back and look at when the first video was posted. I think sometime in November, I want to say, of 2020. I don't know. When was Adobe Max? It was probably okay. a little bit after Adobe Max. I'm such a visual person. I have to look at the calendar. <laughs> no, yeah. That, me, No, me too. I'm very visual. Very, very, very. Sorry. Now we can go into the next part, which is where I start putting in kind of my colors. Well, I put in my colors, but I'm gonna start putting in kind of my shadows and stuff. So I need to make this blue, this is cup. It's the same color orange. So I notice you uh, label all of your layers, which yeah. is something I <laughs> wish I was way better at. <laughs> yeah, I. I have to, because by the time we're done, we're going to have a plethora of layers. <laughs> so this is where everything gets super messy. And I start using clipping mask like a crazy person, but I'm going to start adding in my shadows. And pretty much the way this works is I just add in a bunch of these little multiplied layers all the way back. And this is just how I, this is how I personally create my shadows and my dimension for my pieces. Just orange is like super bright. So let's do this. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do the gradient, but I think I have to do the gradient anyway. Is this a process you developed along the way? Yeah, this is something I just developed along the way that works for me. So it's kind of become like my style <laughs> in a way. Place that in place and I'm going to turn it into a gradient. And this is also going to help add some more dimension to it. Let's put a little white. Actually, let's put a little, let's try yellow. Yellow will probably go right here. And I'm just guessing. And what this is going to do is this is just going to help with the, sh like, create that shading effect. Cody Bear says, PSA, drink water, stretch your wrists, and save your work. <laughs> yep. Or in my case, coffee. Drink your coffee. All right. And this is a fun new tool. It is the freeform gradient tool. Super awesome, super fun to use. 
Okay, so this actually also gets turned into a multiply. Now this doesn't work for every color. Because some of these colors are so rich. The um, overlays just don't work. Okay, I think that looks good. You just gotta have play around with it. Stephanie is asking, is that a global color setting or did you make each of those shapes on multiply lower opacity manually? I'm making each one manually. And does the global color work with the gradient as well? Yeah, I get I think I believe so. We can test the theory, but I believe so. Yep, sure does. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I always recommend using global color. Let me turn that back on. If you're just now joining, we are we are getting we're getting far with this illustration. Kimmy is showing us her process um, with vector art and sticker making. Uh, and if you want to follow along, she's generously given a sketch for you to download, and it's a little bit different than the one that she's working on here, but um, it is for you to use and play. And it's just going to subtly start creating that dimension there. And I learned using the gradient underneath really helps. Oops. And I'm going I'm to double back over and pull the, um, the top part of that cup out, the little lip. I'll pull it back out so we can see it a little bit better because it's going to get hidden underneath all those uh, different layers. But I like doing it this way because I like the hard lines mixed with the softness of the gradient. I just I just really like the way it, that it looks. And I keep it on separate layers because it, if I need to go in and add a reflection or anything like that, I'm able to do so by just hopping on the solid layer or going in between the gradient layer and the solid layer. And I can just add that reflection in there and it won't be as um, harsh. It's a little bit lighter. But I don't think I'll need a reflection for this illustration, but I might put one in just for funsies. That's our illustration. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> it's your world. <laughs> do what you like. Sometimes I like to break my own rules or break the rules in general of art and do whatever I want. So for right now, I'm just kind of guessing what opacity percentages I want. And then I will double back and fix them. Deneen says, it's kind of reminded me of Dixie Cups with that green in the back. <laughs> right? I was thinking like a, a Starbucks cup kind of, cause I was running out of, I made a couple sketches and I was running out of like cup styles. <laughs> I didn't have, didn't know what other cup styles to use. There's only so many cups. I guess I could have did like a tumbler. Sometimes I just reuse the same one. And I'll do it this way with it. Okay. 
Anthony wants to know what kind of coffee do you like to drink? Um, the kind with caffeine. <laughs> Hot coffee um, with, with caffeine, espresso coffee. I order the variety packs. I order the crazy cup variety packs from Amazon. And they're pretty good. They're very flavorful and they have like fruit flavors. And I recently tried a ch chocolate raspberry flavored coffee and it was probably one of the best, best homemade coffees I've ever tried. So I had to go and order an entire pack of them and they're, they should be here today. So I'm excited because I will have that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Nuno says hello from Portugal. Hello. How's the weather in Portugal? <laughs> okay. I just need to be adjusted. <laughs> Randy says octo latte. Yes. Do you have a name for this drink? <laughs> I think I just had it like Octo Coffee or something, Octo Coffee. but we can definitely name it. I don't even have a name for the little guy sitting in it. He's nameless. I feel like we should ask the chat. Yeah. What should we name him? Chat, what should we name the octopus? Maybe we'll write the name on the coffee toward the end. Definitely went a little crazy with all of those um, shades, but that's okay. Let's do some more over here. Oh, we've got a name, Octavius. Oscar, we got some, oh, we got another Oscar, Bubbles, Bubbles, <laughs> Bubbles. oh my gosh, that's so good, someone says under the sea coffee, should be the name, it'd be fun to play with the spelling of that too. I can't spell, so however y'all want to spell it. Because <laughs> it would be very phonetic if I spelled it. Octobean. <laughs> Let's get that one out. There we go. Oh, we got Maki Octo. Octo. Maki Octo. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that one, Maki Octo. Actually, write those down because we're gonna have to label the cup with a couple different, yeah. I have a couple different things right here and we can put those. Somebody make note of that. All right, so now I'm gonna put this in a clipping mask and because we have them on separate layers, I can come over here and I can actually just grab that coffee cup. To group those, paste in place. And I'm going to clip that hot mess all together. Voila, looks great. So let me come over here. Let's bring this lip to the front. So you took your all of your layers that you had been doing with the shading and brought them into the layer with the cup, the cup, and then did a clipping mask. Well, actually, the shading is on its own layer. Oh. The gradient is on its own layer, and then the solid is on its own layer. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna grab this. Tim says, watching this, watching you make this is wild. Okay, 
So I'm going to put the lip of the cup on its own layer as well. But I might not need a gradient for that. We'll do it anyway, just in case. Because why not? I like, apparently I, I love layers. <laughs> layers for everything. We're gonna keep it blue. So everything that's this uh, medium blue color, that's our cup. That way, whenever we just look over, we see medium blue, we know that's all of our cup. Whoop. That should be too complicated. Stuff. Jessica T is wondering if you're using a mouse right now and do you use a mix of pen and mouse in your day-to-day -day work? Yep, I'm actually holding them both <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> yes, I do. I use both the pen and the mouse. just how I like to roll. Chrissy Lee says, this is fun and inspiring. And she put the heart eyes emoji. Yay. I hope y'all are using that other illustration. Make stuff, do the things. Is there somewhere they should tag you um, to share their illustrations? Um, you can tag me on Instagram at Kimmy J Designs, or you can put it into the Illustrator Discord. I am in there as well. There's I'll, I'll see it in there. And you can just, I guess, tag at Kimmy J Designs. I believe that's my Discord name too. I'm about to start, off, start writing that down. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's get the shadow in for this lip. Let's see, we're gonna make it a little bit lighter. I need to double back and put the highlight into that cup. We don't have any highlights. We'd love to know where y'all are streaming in from today. Um, definitely shout out where you're from in the chat. Send some of that to the back. Let's make this a little bit bigger. The only thing with layering it is you end up with so many, you start losing where you're at. Okay, so that's a 20. Let's make that a 10. And I'm just guessing the percentage. Trial and error, seeing what looks good, what doesn't look good. Nice. Josh says, <clears throat> sorry, y'all, excuse me. I work in Prairieville, Louisiana, um, streaming from Austin, Texas. Anthony, we got Cody in Oregon. We've got Moonjed in Jordan. Um, we've got Ryan in Richmond, Virginia. Christy Lee in Roseville, California, near Sacramento. Yes, we've got, oh my goodness, so many people. We've got Daria in Belarus. We got Liz in New York. New York. I love New York. Mia in Michigan. I'm in Texas. <laughs> I love Texas too. <laughs> I'm not very traveled. I've been to a couple places. Okay. 
don't really do too much to that. Just the mark to kind of get some dimension. Now, the only thing about designing like this is you have to run test prints because there's no telling how this is going to print. <laughs> Do you print stickers at home or do you send them off to a printer? I use Sticker Mule. I love Sticker Mule. I think they do a great job with their printing. So I will just send it over there. And the best part is, is you can actually do a do some test print runs with them. But anytime you are creating something for print, you always run test prints, always. Because there is no guarantee you're gonna get print, print it wise, what you see on screen. So I'm gonna use this yellow. Let's see if I can put some highlight in here. It's a little dark. <laughs> Randy is asking, what's the story? Is this coffee for the octopus or is it a coffee beverage with an octopus? <laughs> He gets a coffee beverage with an octopus. I mean, he's just chilling in the drink. Just kind of jumped in there. Do you usually listen to music while you create or are you a silent worker? I usually listen to music. Um, when I'm streaming, it has to be copyright free music. <laughs> so it's usually just like lo-fi, uh, whatever's copyright free. Um, when I'm by myself, I just, uh, I rock out to whatever I can blow my eardrums out to. <laughs> so it's usually like a lot of alternative alternative rock or classical just a, it honestly depends what i'm in the mood for um florence and the machine is like probably my favorite favorite uh, thing to listen to i love the art let's get this one over here Let's just make that a little bit lighter. Not yet. Get out of there. Went into the matrix there for a second. <laughs> there we go. That just kind of makes that a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take that and copy it. And then I'm gonna click into that clipping mask and I'm just gonna paste it in place. There, all right, that cup looks like it is almost done. Uh, there's probably some finishing touches we can put on it, but I'm gonna move on and do finishing touches probably toward the end. All right, let's uh, start on this octopus. I'm gonna have to make a couple more layers for his, um, legs because part of him has to go behind all of this. So we're gonna have to have a couple of layers kind of spread out. So we'll just start here and then we'll move him as we need to. This needs to be green. like for now. Yeah, that's gonna be tricky. Oop. Wrong button. Everyone who's tuning in now, um, we will be streaming tomorrow as well. So please, we'd love it if you join tomorrow um, to continue the Continue this process. Oh my, that is dark. What happened there? 
Okay. Oh, I like those colors. Yeah. It just kind of threw in a little bit of everything. Um, okay. I'm not mad at it. Let's see. And how do you get to the point um, gradient that you're doing? So this is the free, it's right up here. It is a free form gradient. So let's see, I will actually get rid of the gradient. And if you need to get to the gradient, you're going to go to window gradient. You just click on that, put it where you need it to be. You just click on the object you need to make a gradient and then click on which one you want. So I'm just using the freeform gradient because I'm just able to kind of put where I need my shadows and highlights to be. And that's just all I'm really doing is just trying to create shadows and highlights just to help with some of creating some of that dimension here. Um, oh, oh yeah. uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm just using this um, green as the whoops green as the highlight for right now i might go in and change it because i think it's going to clash with that uh, color back there but we'll see josh is asking if there's a way to group layers in um in illustrator currently not that i know of you can in photoshop but not in Illustrator. That's why I color code everything. Just, it makes it easier. So color coding for me is how I would group it. But as far as I know, there isn't a way to group yet. And Laura is asking, does the freeform gradient exist in Illustrator on the iPad? And I can say, yes, I love it, but I actually didn't realize it was on desktop now. So I will definitely be playing with it on desktop as well. Um, but it is on AI on iPad. Yeah. I'm trying to edit it again and it doesn't look like it wants to let me into edit. All right, well, you know what? That's where it's going, mate. So I'm going to go in and Which one works best for what I'm trying to do? It's going to multiply because I multiply. Yeah, light and kind of gives it what I need to give. All right, so yeah, those two colors work because once I switch it to light and it kind of shifts it into a purple. And I do it that way just to give it a subtle, subtle depth. Nothing spectacular. This would be the so now we just do everything we did for that coffee cup we do for here. Um, Z is asking if there are certain designs um, considerations for stickers. Like, I think they must be asking print wise or size. Um, size wise, I would say consult with your printer. So whoever you plan on printing your sticker with, go to their website and they will have, they will normally have a list of considerations and they'll, normally they even have a template set up for you. The way I'm doing the gradients and the way I'm doing the opacities, they're probably going to print a little funny. So I know I'm going to have to run a test print, look at it and make adjustments. So I know what I'm setting myself up for, <laughs> which is fine because I run, I'm used to running test prints. But if it's the first time you're doing stickers, find you a printer. Uh, whether it's Sticker Mule, Vistaprint, whoever you want to use, go to their website and they will normally have suggestions and things like that. 
that way you know exactly what you're in for. Now, if you're just doing it from home, you'll just have to run test prints on your own paper. But as a designer, test prints, test print, test print, test print. <laughs> <laughs> because what you see on screen is not what you're gonna get when you go to print. Like most of these shades are gonna be lost and I'm gonna have to go bump up the contrast, definitely. But that's okay because um, I, know, I know that. Robert wants to know if you save any of your gradients to use later. No, I do not because every illustration is different and they are not going to call for the same gradient. And Steve's mentioning that's a great use for the library, um, saving cool gradients. Have you have you played with the libraries, libraries yet where you can save and it goes throughout each of your programs. Yep, That's I amazing. sure do. I use that when I'm doing any sort of design work. I, I will utilize the libraries because that will help you from losing any of your assets when you move. Because I was, oh man, especially in college, I was so bad about moving my assets around and I would lose everything. Because if you move it out of one folder, just one folder, you, all of your documents are messed up. They're gone. And then you have to go in and relink everything. Whereas if you use the libraries, you don't have to do that. Everything pretty much stays linked up for you. So you have nothing to worry about. So I pretty much know if I push these to the extreme, they will print fine. Like if I stay on the higher end of the opacities. Which is pretty much what I want is I want that um, I want that hard edge. Moonjed is saying I'm still waiting for the brush cleaning like, like Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the sound. Just smack it on my thing over here. <laughs> Such an iconic sound. <laughs> Do you ever stray from your sketches that you have? Yeah, all the time, all the time. Um, I try, I'm trying to get better about that because if you're working with a client, what you sketch is what they expect. So if you're straying from your sketches, um, you're straying from the client's expectations, which is pretty much, you're not providing what you agreed on but I, I am really bad about straying from my sketches for my personal work, but that's just my personal work. So I try to stay as close to the sketch as possible, just out of practice for when I work with clients. And your sketches are pretty detailed. Um, do you ever show thumbnail sketches to clients or are they typically as detailed as you have here? The clients I work with, thumbnail sketches do, for some reason, don't appease them. <laughs> they, they want detailed sketches. So I will provide like one detailed sketch of what we're gonna do. If I do show thumbnails, it would maybe be like three and then we'll go into a detailed sketch. But I find a lot of clients, they they want to have a better idea of what you're what you're providing them, and in order to do that, I have to provide like a very detailed sketch for them to visually see it. And then for me personally, a detailed sketch enables me to work more efficiently because it 
it's a it's essentially a blueprint and it's telling me exactly where I'm going. So there's no like me getting lost in the sketch. So marking out all of my all of my shades, my highlights and everything. I'm less likely to get lost in that design process. So I actually need to come in and knock out that circle. So let me do that real quick. So I have a circle in here and it needs to go. Um, Chris is wondering how, how these shapes uh, for the shadows that you're making, how do you decide upon different shapes? Do um, you have like a process or? How the image is drawn, what's overlapping, where, and uh, basic light study, just experience on how light works. So having an idea of where your light source is and how it's gonna affect that shape. And sometimes I do forget where my light source is coming from, <laughs> but simply where everything's overlapping. So this tentacle here is overlapping itself. So I know there's gonna be a shadow through here. This, the tentacle is also overlapping the cup here. So I know there's gonna be a shadow coming through there and the light source is kind of just going right up the middle. So we're just kind of playing with it. Or the light source might be going up the middle. I'm not too sure. They can be coming from anywhere. Who knows? I didn't project it <laughs> apparently, <laughs> but I just kind of go and guess sometimes. <laughs> I didn't plan out that, <laughs> <laughs> but just looking at where things are overlapping itself and where your light source would be hitting it. Okay, my light source is coming from that way. The upper left hand corner is actually where my light source is coming from. So having an idea of how the light works helps you plot all that out. As for the shape, I'm putting it in a clipping mask so the actual shape doesn't, doesn't matter. It's just gonna clip. As long as the shape within where it's gonna sit on the actual object fits, kind of fits what I want it to be. That's all that really matters, which I actually roughly sketched and plotted that out. So up here, kind of goes around on itself. Uh, Chris followed up and asked random or planned, but it seems as though they're kind of, they're part of your sketch as well as. Yeah, they're kind of, they're a part of it and a bit random because sometimes I'll get started and then I'll notice places where it needs to be and it was not planned out and I'll have to double back and add them in there. So like right here where I'm adding them right now, I didn't put it in the sketch, but it needs to be there. And I'll turn off this actual sketch just to kind of get a better look at it. Wow. Looks like everything looks good. I want it to be darker up here. I'll push it a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I want to see. But when you put the opacity in, sometimes you're not going to see what you're looking for. Tim wants to know if you do graffiti too. Uh, no, no, I do not do graffiti. I used to do hand lettering, but I haven't done that in years. I used to love drawing letters, but I haven't done that in a long, long time. I'm gonna have to double back and get these uh, little suckers in because I didn't put those in, but I'm gonna think I'm gonna do those last because we 
might be able to create the composition without having to really put them in. We'll see. Let's make that lighter. Let's do 20. Just do like a fade over. We've got Steve in the chat talking about two great artists uh, to watch on Adobe Live is Kyle T. Webster and Wade Acker. Yep, I watch them both. All right, so I'm gonna group them together, come back down to the solid layer. I'm going to grab that. You turn it into a clipping mask. There we go. Kind of put it in there. This one looks a little funny. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Scale it back a bit. Actually, it's darker than what it really needs to be. So I'll come in here and adjust that. So it's 30, 70. Ooh, yeah, that's really dark. <laughs> Fairy says, that's shading. Oh, looks so good. Thank you. It does. It looks awesome. I, I love watching your process. It's so different than how I work. And I'm already learning a few things that I can take into my process. That's good. Yeah. I like to, I like it when people are able to adapt things from other people's processes. Okay. So these suckers, we did not put them in anywhere. So let me go in and do that. probably going to omit like half the shading I just did. But <laughs> hey, like I said, I work backwards sometimes. Actually, I'm really just beyond what I need. Place that place. Grab them both and get the center and bam. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna think on that. I'm gonna double back. So let's move on to the actual head. So the head, I'm gonna have to move. So I'm gonna copy him and he has to go above this whipped cream. No, below? Yeah, he has to go below. Well, then no, I don't need to move him. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> you know, I don't think I need to move him. I think he's good where he's at. Paste him in place. Let's add his gradient. A lot of people in the, sh in the chat are telling, telling everyone that they think it looks really good, so. Yay. People are so super excited to see kind of how you work and everything. Slowly coming together. Barry wonders how you clip it all into one layer. Um, and I know that Kimmy's been showing a little bit throughout. I think after the octopus head is built. Yep. I'll show you again. Each one, I use the same technique. I'm using a clipping mask, pretty much. And it's on its own layer. So if I need to go in and edit it, I can without really causing any issues to the rest of the layer. So this I need to fix right here because it looks like it might be overlapping. 
Back that leg. Yep, same with this one. And there's some more stuff we'll still need to add to that leg down there. We're just getting the basics in and then we'll double back and do double back around and add more details. I like to try and work as efficiently as possible. Get it all in, double back around, get in those details. Hop into this layer. Okay, so I'm going to actually put that on its own layer so it doesn't interfere with that leg. Keep that green. Awesome. <laughs> Robert says the octopus looks so friendly. <laughs> He looks very innocent. Like, he's like, I'm not up to anything. I'm just chilling here, consuming my coffee, however I see fit. <laughs> I actually might need to make that bottom purple layer a bit lighter, I'm thinking, but we'll see. And I have all of this plotted out, ready to go. Oh, I'm still on a gradient. Get rid of that. <laughs> do you usually create your illustrations in kind of a sit down, do it all in one day, or do you ever take a step back and have a few days in between and check it later? I have what I like to call shelf time. And it's basically where I put it to the side for a while and ignore it and then come back and look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. So I try not to do it all in one day, but if it's something that I'm really like rocking and rolling on and I'm, I know it's coming along well, I'll finish it. And then maybe the next day I'll come back to it and kind of give it a look. But normally a 24 hour turnaround isn't, isn't practical for me. <laughs> if you can do that, that's amazing. But for me, I always want to, I always want to come back with a second pair of eyes and really take a look at it because sometimes you're going to see something that you didn't see the day before. That, that fresh look. There we go. That is where we're really going to see it come together. <laughs> uh, Moonjet says this reminds them of a Korean dish where you eat the octopus tentacles that are still moving. Ooh. <laughs> Poor octopus. <laughs> We like to think of this one sitting in a hot tub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, of coffee. <laughs> he's kind of chilling. And he's he's adding a little extra flavor to that coffee. <laughs> there we go. That is uh, not something I would want to eat. <laughs> I'll still laugh. <laughs> Octopus is my coffee. <laughs> it is my coffee. That's what Fairy says. <laughs> Mm 
Do you have any dream projects that you've always wanted to work on and haven't gotten to yet? Um, well, I'd like to do some poster projects from like bands and stuff. I've always been inspired by uh, band poster art. So I would really like to do some of that. But I don't know how we would print it because most poster art is screen printed. And this just isn't a practical screen print. <laughs> this would be a nightmare. <laughs> but that's something I, I always wanted to do. All right, let's take a look at that. Yes. Now, if I want to get really okay. detailed, I would like go in another direction with that. <laughs> but I'll double back around. And then we we'll to make sure we have time to finish because I can go super detailed with this and work on it for like ever in a day. <laughs> oh, Cody asked, does Kimmy have any dream clients? Um, I would like Adobe. <laughs> I like to work with Adobe one day. Um, Starbucks would be one of my dream clients. I would love to do some illustrations for Starbucks. Uh, who else? I don't know who else. I would like to do some work like some band, some poster art for like maybe Florence and the Machine. I think that would be really fun. And Actually, then, you could do album artwork um, yeah. because then it doesn't have to be screen printed or right? yeah. a poster, like a poster inside of album art, um, little pieces like that could be really cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. Does anyone buy albums anymore? <laughs> I do. Occasionally. <laughs> they can get they can get expensive. Yeah, I know records are back in style. We've got a little bit left to go before uh, wrapping up today. But there is a question in the chat and Ferry is asking, Kimmy, what is your favorite breakfast? <laughs> My favorite breakfast? Oh, um, depends what I'm in the mood for. So if I'm in the mood for something sweet, I can really pack away some donuts, cinnamon rolls. Um, if I'm in the mood for something savory, grits, eggs, uh, bacon, it's kind of all smashed into one. And egg sandwiches were like really good. <laughs> Want some buttery uh, biscuit, but I'm not really a breakfast person. Oddly enough, I could go probably all day without eating and then get hungry like toward the end of the day. It's with coffee. I think coffee is your favorite breakfast, right? Yeah. Like I, I think it is. I think that's a bad habit and I really need to work on not doing that anymore, especially since I don't have to go into the office anymore. It's like, you can, you can afford to eat breakfast now, <laughs> but I'll wake up and I'll drink a cup of coffee and then I'll drink some more coffee. And then finally around like 11, I'll eat lunch. <laughs> Trying to smooth some of these out. Well, um, we are coming up on the end of our stream today, but I wanted to let everyone know who's watching in the chat that please join us tomorrow, uh, 9 30 
Pacific time. I keep getting confused because I'm actually on central time. <laughs> We're both central. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'd love to have you tomorrow. And, you know, if you missed uh, some of the stream, this will be, this is available for replay. So um, be sure to search that out. And I'm just so impressed at how far you've gone in just this short amount of time with all these details. It's really incredible to watch. It's probably the fastest I've ever worked. <laughs> Normally, um, it would take me a really long time to do stuff, but yeah, I'm moving pretty fast. So I might not need to work on it tonight. Just kind of let it pick up where we left off tomorrow, I'm thinking. And if y'all don't already follow Kimmy here on Behance, be sure to check out her page and check out the previous stream she's done um, in the live streaming community here. Uh, it's always awesome when you get a notification that someone you're following is going live. It kind of makes you giddy. You're, you get to see what they're going to be working on that stream. Um, but we're really excited to be here tomorrow and there are definitely live streams going on past this stream. So please continue watching because there's so much knowledge to gain and a lot of good, good things to see. Trying to get that. A little eye baggage. He's not benefiting from that coffee with all those eye bags he got. <laughs> oh. Just do them all at once. And I'm always making sure I want to turn that sketch off and scale down, take a look at it, scale back up. If you stay on top of it too long, you kind of even a little become a little numb to it, and you're not really gonna realize what you're doing. Let's put a shadow heel. So if you're just now joining, we are finishing up this stream, but I wanted to let y'all know we will be streaming tomorrow and uh, Kimmy will continue the process of creating this sticker in Illustrator with all of her layers beautifully organized and um, we're excited to see y'all tomorrow. Kimmy, any, any last day one advice? No. Save your work. <laughs> Make sure you save. That is always yep. great All advice. Right. Yep, got it on save. So we still have a, a good little bit left to do tomorrow. But I would love to see what y'all come up with on this other sketch I have. So be sure to download that sketch down there. I want to see what y'all come up with whether it's in the same style or in your own style, that uh, sketch is free for y'all to use. Uh, do whatever you want with it, use yours. <laughs> Cody says, save your work. Yes. Yep, yep. Well, be sure to check out uh, who's after us and we will see you, see you tomorrow. Oh. We've got, let me, let's see. we've got, after us, we've got, oh, schedule one, sorry about that. Uh, we've got Claudie from Print My Soul coming up with the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. We've got Eliza Todd with web design, and we've got, Howard Pinsky with the XD Creative Challenge.
And uh, Cloudy is great. So if y'all are really looking to learn some illustrator tips and techniques, she, she's really awesome. She's a great person to learn from. And in InDesign as well. Do you use any of the other Adobe products like InDesign? Uh, yeah, I use InDesign uh, for books, articles, layouts, and things like that. Resumes. <laughs> make your resumes on InDesign. Don't make them in Illustrator. <laughs> you will drive yourself nuts. Um, and uh, Photoshop for little things. I'm not a big Photoshop user, but I do use it. And of course, Fresco. Use Fresco. Uh, let's go. And then um, wanting to get into After Effects, I've used Pro, not, is it Procreate? No, not Procreate, um, Premiere to create some videos and stuff. I've used that before. Yeah, I would love to see this moving. It'd be a really cool animation. Yeah, me too. Might have to look into that. Steve says InDesign, it rocks. Yes, I love InDesign. And I just like how all the products are integrated together and they work beautifully together. So everything just kind of flows so, so great. Fixing some of these eyes, they're a little wonky. Do you ever do your textures in Photoshop? Uh, yeah, some uh, a lot of times I'll create my textures in Photoshop, convert them to a TIFF, and then bring them into Illustrator. Or I'll bring them in as a JPEG and I'll use a gradient on top of them and make that texture a gradient across the illustration. It just depends what I'm doing and what I need that texture for on how I'm gonna use it. So for something like this, I would just use the built-in textures in Illustrator, but I would do that last. And also the reason why I would break up all my layers like this is because it would be so easy just to go one layer up from that solid layer and add that texture in there and not have to fight with all this mess that I'm creating. <laughs> so having all of that on one layer makes it super, super easy to work. So being organized, you work a lot more efficiently that way. There's anywhere else I need to go. Let's bring this up some. And I'll go ahead and lock all this in. So I'm gonna select it all, group it, come down here. I'm gonna get my head, copy that. Now I'm gonna paste in place on top and I'm using the solid head, not the gradient head. And I'm going to make it into a clipping mask. So now I just clipped it all in place. I can turn that off. Now you can see it just like that. And by doing it that way, you're able to see a couple mistakes. So like this over here needs a little bit more of a subtle transition upward. So I'm going to paste, whoops, paste the whole thing because they're all grouped together. Okay, and that's it. I'll go ahead and circle back to this tentacle over here. Some stuff going on with it. That. So 
So I think I'm gonna have to put it on its own layer. But this is kind of where I'm probably gonna start derailing from the sketch, <laughs> but that's okay. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see what you do tomorrow. And for anyone who just joined, you can watch this um, look in uh, the videos when they're recorded, they will be played again. So um, also please join us tomorrow. Thank you so much, Kimmy. Yeah, you're welcome.